Hello, it's Scott Manley here. Today I want to talk about the intersection of two of my favourite things, music and astronomy. No, we're not talking about Brian May, we're talking about Unknown Pleasures, Joy Division's 1979 album. An amazing album, it wasn't a great hit at the time, but its stature has only grown over the years, and I could talk about its qualities for hours, and especially I could go into Martin Hannett's unusual recording techniques, but the cover is almost more famous than the music on the album. It's an astronomical plot of radio data from a pulsar rendered in white on a black background. Now this was put together by Peter Saville who was the designer for Factory Records, but the design was suggested to him by Bernard Sumner, a band member, uh, and it was a, he originally had seen that in a 1977 edition of the Cambridge Encyclopedia of Astronomy. Now, the original creator of this scientific data plot was unknown for a long time, but finally in 2015, the man responsible was tracked down by a writer from Scientific American. Now, he was a student in Arecibo in 1970, and his name was Harold Kraft, or Hal to his friends. Yeah, he'd been a grad student. He was working for Frank Drake on things like measuring the temperature of Venus using radiometric techniques and other kind of mundane stuff. But in 1967, Jocelyn Bell Burnell and friends discovered pulsars. And this put Arecibo in the position of being the best instrument in the world to study this. Arecibo was much larger, it was more sensitive, and it had much better technology. Back in Britain, they were using you know paper chart recorders to like collect the data. Arecibo had digital stuff which was coming online because it was a radar facility, uh, as well as being a radiometric, radio obs passive observer. So pulsars are compact rotating stars. Less than 10 miles across, these are the evolved end states of stars that have burned through their uh, nuclear fuels and they've either collapsed or sometimes these are remnants from things like supernova. So CP1919, the pulsar in this case, had a rotation period of 1.33733 seconds. It was staggeringly stable. And the regular radio pulses really confused the astronomers who you know, tried to think hard about what kind of natural processes could produce these really precise and accurate ticks. They nicknamed the source LGM1. Now what was happening was the magnetic field in the star was getting dragged around by the rotation and when the magnetic field pointed in just the right direction it would be essentially radiating energy at Earth. So as it rotated around, it would get these regular pulses, and that's what we were seeing back on Earth. So, you know, a couple of years later, Hal is at Arecibo, and he's got this giant radio telescope. So what does he do? He says, let's use it to look at the shape of the pulses. Let's see if we can get any clue as to the nature of this thing just by looking at very small details inside the pulses. The pulses lasted about 50 milliseconds in out of this, uh, you know, 1.33, one and a third seconds. And uh, that still meant that there was enough room to collect some data. Now, what he was really starting to look at was how the shape of the pulse might change from one pulse to the next. And that's what this plot is looking at. And I gotta clarify, a lot of sources say that this plot is a Fourier transform of the signal, and it's not, but I can completely understand why music journalists might make this mistake, because in the 80s there were actually quite a lot of uh, fancy pieces of digital music hardware that would do stacked Fourier plots so you could visualize the sounds that you're filling your cathedral of audio with or you know whatever you know you were doing as a, a musician no it's just a, a it's just the intensity of the signal you know the signal goes up and then it goes down as the pulse ends so the plot has basically taken the signal cut it into 1.337 second chunks and then stacked them on top of each other and then they've actually cut off like one and a quarter seconds worth of audio so that you're just looking at 80 odd successive pulses and I presume that he then just stared at this for a long time to try to see if there were any patterns in this that might give him some ideas as to what was really driving this signal. And truthfully, 
you might see some patterns in there, but really there's no patterns that people have been able to discern. Although, you know, as the science of pulsars has got better understood, it is now possible to see things like star quakes where the period will change as the radius of the object changes. It's important to actually realize that the stuff that we see on the album cover is actually missing a very long flat section that's off to the side. And also, that while this plot was designed or was originally plotted by a computer, the printouts that uh, were produced were not considered publication quality. And so what he did was he handed the uh, plots to a drafts person that worked at the university and then she would hand draw this plot one line at a time and i think this is an important factor in its uh, aesthetic qualities right this is it has the touch of a it has the natural touch of a human artist that has created this it was originally white on or black on white and it was later reproduced in different colors and finally of course the album cover decided to use white on black and that's the one that we know, that's the one that we see, and that is the one that has entered popular culture. You'll see it everywhere. I've seen, you know, you can see pictures of people that have it tattooed down their back and everything. Disney produced a t-shirt with the Mickey Mouse shape in this, and apparently they pulled it from their store very quickly, probably when somebody in marketing realized where the name Joy Division came from. But yeah, the concept of presenting the data like this has also been used by other authors. You can look around. They, uh, some people call them joy plots, but I think the accepted term is now ridgeline plots because it looks like ridges of a mountain as you travel successively down. You know, this is just really this iconic part of data visualization, which is attached to a work of great musical significance. It's you know, obviously everything that I like ab about things, uh, about life in general. So yeah, that's where it all comes from. I hope you enjoyed the story. I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.